All right. Hellabass live Wednesday night on the eve of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. It's that time. I know we've had tournament fishing, but there's a little the Bassmaster Elite Series kicking off. It's a little different for me. What about you, Matt? Uh, yeah, it's like it's the deal, man. It's the deal. Plus, I got my my two my two roommates from last year, uh, Brad and John, both uh, both kicking off their campaigns. Bradley back with back with the Elite Series. John elite series rookie so super pumped to see uh to see how they do it's been hard leaving them alone and not like calling them right like i, I want to be like hey how's it going are you catching them what do you think are you excited i'm just i called brad one time a couple after like the second day of practice and that's it nice i, I heard like uh, just a, a little bit right i think they talked about a little bit on uh upshaw's open qual right that he was kind of Feeling like he was getting some bites, kind of feeling good. Like that was kind yeah. of the, the vibe. Yeah, that was a disaster show. I got freaking railed on that one. <laughs> they, they did kind of gang up on you. <laughs> they did. I know, but I know that's like part of the that's part of the deal there. But man, yeah, I got Todd yeah. and Ish on me now. Yeah, Ish was he was going like <laughs> he was like you pick like you fish and you're never gonna make us like whoa. Hey, I will give I will give Ish credit. He called me today and he was like, "Hey man, like I didn't go too hard on you, did I?" And I was like, "No man, that's the show. Like I came I came strong with like an overabundance of facts." So yeah. I said, "It's all good." I said, "Bring it for the rest of the year." Yeah, we might we might bring some stats tonight. We'll probably talk some fancy fishing. Yeah. Nice. I'm game. Uh, well, Brian says we look and sound good, so that's awesome. Hey, there's a severe thunderstorms tonight. Like, I mean, it was cracking thunder. That's why I Is sent you that deal. Yeah, I haven't heard it in a minute. I mean, I hadn't heard thunder in like months. It rained here yesterday quite heavily. <clears throat> we got like an inch of rain yesterday. It melted a lot of snow since you were here on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, when I so, yeah, that was so that was weird. Was flying up there for like twelve hours. So I got there Saturday at like one. Did the deal Saturday night for St. Jude. Rich came out. Thank you for coming out, dude. Yeah, much appreciated. A lot of guys from the Crappie Chronicles, and you actually won an Afco prize pack. There you go. And then uh, we raised like forty one hundred dollars for St. Jude from that fundraiser at the Giesenbrauer Beer Company. Did you try mm -hmm. to break your PB? It was it's the. What'd you think of it? I, I thought it was freaking delicious. It was. I don't know that I'd like drink five of them. No, it's like... for a sipping beer. So like the whole right. night, it was at a brewery. And then the whole night I had two 10 ounce break your PBs. And I managed to get through the entire night. Just had two of those sipped on them the whole night. It was perfect. Yeah, I had one of those and then one of their, their loggers. So yeah. I'm not... <clears throat> I don't know. My body doesn't tolerate high IBU beers, so I like something that's kind of light and. No, those like you have to chew most of those beers. Yeah, but it was awesome. They did a great job. I think they were happy with how it went out. Crappie Chronicles guys, Adam Bartuzek, uh, Griff Waldo, uh, Matt Waldron, and the St. Jude people and the guys from the brewery put it together. We raised four over four grand because people like you came out and donated raffle stuff. Yeah. So much appreciated. Absolutely. Yeah, my tickets uh, had high ROI on my uh, twenty dollars worth of tickets. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we we were a little bit outnumbered by ice fishermen. I'm not gonna lie. I was hoping the bass uh, crew would have showed up a little stronger, but there was there, was... there were. I think there were probably fifteen or twenty BTO yeah. listeners there. Like I, I would, because kind of scan in the room, and you know, there's some people that'll come up and talk right. to you right away, and then other people that like on their way out were like, "Hey," and I'm like, "Well, dude, like I've been here for three hours. You should come up and said hi." Like. <laughs> at yeah. six not at 9 30 but no i enjoyed it i think there was more tickets in the uh the vexlars and the ice auger and those buckets though so i think i would agree going would for agree. the sunline and the uh the bfes and the uh the uh, afco was a, a much higher percentage play yeah you played that well plus you don't ice fish so an ice yeah, house exactly. for you probably would just end up sitting in the garage or on ebay yeah i would sell it which actually uh <laughs> So there's a prior lake hook setters is having an event this Saturday. I'll probably try to flash it up later. Uh, it's like a garage tackle swap garage sale. <clears throat> I think I'm actually going to get a bunch of stuff together, bulk up some like really good, like, like a one gallon bag of like power baits and probably just be like 10 bucks. I like just it. Like 
bunch of stuff. I'm just going to clear house. So I think uh, everybody who's a serious fisherman has that hundred pack of either motor oil, red shad or blue fleck or plum 10 inch power worms. It's yeah. some somewhere in some bin in their garage. Absolutely. Fair so if assessment. You're looking for like the old style power bait crowds they don't make anymore. Or you're looking for like uh, an old creature bait at Lake Fork doesn't make anymore or like old style producto worms. I'm going to have bulk bags of those for cheap, ready to move on Saturday at Prior Lake VFW. <laughs> Dude, uh, Lake Fork made a, I don't know if they still make it. I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud. They made the best Carolina rig little plastic ever. It had like little wings. It, creature, it was like, like it was like a yeah, it was like a ringworm, but it had, had little like a, wings out on the tail, side. And then it had like two paddle tail arms off the side. Yes, that thing is freaking amazing. And they had the full size. Yep. And, and the they baby. had the little junior. And you could put a uh two aught straight shank, uh not straight shank, but a two aught just offset Gamagatsu round bend. One aught. You got some? Rich is leaving. I think I think I think Rich might have a couple packs of those. But my problem was I ended up having, I got them for the Bass Nation Championship on Conroe in 2016. And then as I moved where I put all my stuff, I would be like, what is that? I mean, it smelled like an Italian restaurant and I pinpointed one like rubber made tub and those things were leaking. I had, a, I had like six packs of them and they were leaking. So they were, they were out. So, that's them. We've got the original packaging. Yep. We got the the newer packaging. These are the full size though. But uh, yeah, that's them. It's a ridiculously good, and I, like I said, I don't ever Carolina rig, but when I when I thought that was going to be the deal, like that was, that was the bait. And I mean, dude, it, it floats and moves, right? Yep. Weird looking, aren't they? Yeah. You know what? You could probably throw it on a biffle head. Yeah. Or you could just throw a biffle, biffle bug. Still, you can't, I wish you could smell it through the USB mic, but that, that's what I just said. While you were gone, hard. I don't have them because every time I moved, I'd be like, what? What what is the gar where I knew I mean you can tell it's garlic and then I found it was that bag and the bag had come like de all the bags had come like delaminated and I just tossed them like it was bad. Yes, I did, Scott. Doug says shoot panger, you you ran that was, when you, that was when you went to get those baits. <clears throat> I had to like get home. I told my wife I'd be home to watch a movie. She was asleep by the time I got home. <laughs> <clears throat> it's good though. Yeah, it works. The baby one I like throwing on a mojo. Which is just a finesse Carolina rig. Right. I guess I wouldn't be opposed to throwing a mojo rig. It's a just details. That's <laughs> it's kind of like the uh, gateway drug to the Carolina rig. But you know, a little weed. I mean <laughs> it goes it goes weightless Cinco, split shot rig, mojo rig, Carolina rig. It is, is like the man's mosquito hawk. Minus yeah, you the You know what? If you want some, Justin, I might find a bag of those before the weekend too. So uh, you never know what I'm gonna dig up. But now that I've announced it publicly. It's like joining the gym. I'm going to make it happen for Saturday. There you go. Hmm. Where do we start? I want to make sure we thank Arsenal Fishing for supporting the uh, the stream and the channel. Can't forget about those guys. Uh, I just Omnia. like that I can be in the studio here and just sit back and let you run yeah, the show. Yeah, just like read comments and like yeah, not it's, it's all It's and... all up to you. I'm not scared. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people are questioning what what you know about a sea rig, but uh, nothing. Hmm. So we're gonna talk fancy fishing tonight. So after you qualify this year, will you still play fancy fishing even if you're in the elites? Yeah, there's a bunch of guys who fish the elite series who play fantasy fishing. 
Do you think? And the one like a, and the ones league? who don't. No, the ones who don't have their <laughs> wives or girlfriends play for them. Right, but I feel like there should be an underground league of only elite anglers playing against elite anglers for blighting rights and fancy fishing. I agree. I think some of the guys pay attention to it. Like I know some of the guys get a little. Well, they definitely there's that they, they get their feelings like, hurt when they're low percentage read guys. Articles. <laughs> yeah, they definitely read those. But I feel like it. It okay when you've reached a level where you're on the fantasy fishing, like you are no longer a human being. You are uh, you're an entity. You're a thing. Mm-hmm. So you can't like take that personally. Like when someone's like, oh, I'm staying away from that. Or you know what I mean? Like it, you're not looking at that person as like someone with a soul and feelings. You're looking at them as a potential for 305 points. <laughs> right. Like when we say, ah, I'm really nervous about picking Kennedy. <clears throat> it's not because we don't like Kennedy. Yeah, it's not like no. we're not rooting for him. It's it, not like we don't love him as an angler. I agree. We just know he's a dicey proposition. And and like when I profess my love for Tyler Rivette for the last two years, I've never talked to the guy before. I maybe have said one word to him, but I mean, the guy is a 30th place machine. He gets you yeah. 220 fantasy points every time. And I picked him as the sixth round of our private draft this week. Yeah, I know. I might have to drop Chad Pipkins. There's some real good talent that's still in the draft pool. I, I don't feel like there's a lot of great matchups for Pipkins this year. No, Pickwick, Claire. no forks. No, you know what I mean? There's, like, yeah, but, but the, usually like early in the year, there's a couple of good like offshore yeah, ledge tournaments. But I got good, him good for the him. back half of the right. season. St. Clair, Thousand Islands, and wherever the other one was. It's a small mouth deal. Champlain, right? Yeah. St. Uh, Champlain. It's a uh, <clears throat> St. Lawrence, Champlain, and St. Clair. Do they go? I don't remember what order. That's the three. Um, I don't remember what order they go in. <clears throat> Let's see here. A couple questions trickled in. Do you use the star feature when you're you're moderating your own stream? At uh... no, what's the star feature? Well, you can stream your own. You can star comments so that you can pull them up. Oh, really? I need to <clears throat> do that. So okay. it doesn't show it, but it tells you that you no. want to do it later. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, there's two columns on the top. There's the live and the star. It's so on the right hand of everybody's comment. You can hit a star and you can save them for later. Sh- uh, Saint Clair, Champlain, Saint Lawrence. Yeah. It wouldn't make sense for him to I guess, go to Champlain, then to St. Clair, and then back to... Yeah. That'd probably piss off a lot of guys. <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, Pangrak is fishing all of the elite qualifying Bassmaster Open's all nine this year again. Uh, I'm also fishing the uh, Keystone Lake Anglers qualifying Saturday jackpots. There you go. <laughs> I'm excited about those. Was that a, a weeknight thing? or a- No, it's like three saturdays nice but i got kind of lucky because he's like the dude i'm fishing it with is like the best shallow water. this is how good he is he's made like 22 oklahoma state teams like 19 in a row Mm. and he still flips with mono but that dude like is a flipping legend he flips a uh a power hog with chartreuse die and just hammers them on 20 pound mono. So he said, Hey, the early, the two, there were fishing four of them. He said, The early ones will use your boat. You can show me the live scope deal and the A rig and the jerk bait deal. He goes, And then the May and July one, he goes, We'll get in my boat and we'll go dob around in the bushes. There we did go. it last year and it worked out nicely. So we're going to do it again this year. I learned about flipping bushes. He learned about scope it in the middle of nowhere and hopefully you pa- pocket some gas money to fund your open addiction yeah so yeah you you called it that not me <laughs> uh somebody suggests that uh, travis is painting live somewhere so there is that <clears throat> i'm guessing that's smallmouth crush but i have no idea painting live <clears throat> Travis likes to experiment with a lot of lifestyle comment on his, content on his channel. I don't know. I have noticed that you should try rooming with him for 11 straight days. Speaking of the, the Cherokee Toyota cha- or Everstart or mm-hmm. Toyota Championship. Yeah. It had iCast and the classic. Sure. And... Okay. 
Mono, uh, Mono's kind of going to come back. I don't know. I'm uh, Because I'm I've never, he doesn't game. break them off. I mean, he can just give them the beans. He can just, just he tighten the guy? screws. Uh, yes, 20 pound. No, he's not. He is a Stren. Stren. He like uses Stren. No, it's the it's the <laughs> blue, that weird colored blue Stren. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know he's a Stren guy. I don't know if they do. He's got. Uh, but he's a hundred percent a strength and dude, it's a, when it bites, it's rod tip to the water. And just, I mean, there is no turning back. I mean, there's gotta be three foot of stretch in it. <laughs> I guess if he runs out, I got some bulk spools of strength AN 40. Okay. You know, so, I mean, that's, that's probably only slightly newer than the old blue strength. So, you know, <clears throat> TK is approving of our mono talk so early in the stream. So, yeah. Uh, have you ever used that Marizo's mono with Sunline? It's like mono that's like $43 a spool. No. You can throw 19 pound mono on a pop art, and I swear it feels like it's eight pound test mono. It's unbelievable. It's the craziest mono I've ever felt in my life. The only thing I use it for is a, is a pop art. That's the only thing. I like braid. On my poppers, <clears throat> maybe a very short mono leader, yeah, little baby one. No, nope, cut that one off. I need to order some stuff from TK for this year. Ooh, special colors? No, he's got those pliers that open when you squeeze them, mm -hmm. and then the and bands the and stuff. Yeah, he sent he sent me some. He did he did it. Those things are freaking awesome. You used them uh -huh. ever? The Nico yep. pliers, yeah. Arsenal has them too, so I that's yeah, I use them all the time. Big fan, nice. All right, so there's a Sean hard hitting questions. Uh, no, I cooked myself a uh, couple, <laughs> couple back straps for uh for valentine's day and taking, taking care of himself this year yeah <clears throat> tackle cross says send you the new the new address I'll, so. I'll order it i ain't asking for stuff tk you're a hard-working man oh let's see you want to start just like general elite talk or do you want to get into fancy dude fishing? don't ask me it's your show i've done like five <laughs> shows this week i just this want to sit conversation. back i just this want to sit a... back and chat with you rich well that's what we're doing hold we're on just... i gotta send the link to a couple people though i don't think we're gonna get into the details but yes matt is uh single right now <clears throat> for those in chat I don't, I don't think we need the details tonight Let's get into fantasy fishing ASAP. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's just tacklecraft.com with a K, Doug, Tacklecraft's website. Oh, dude, so, yeah, if you haven't fish. been there, like Tacklecraft is, TK's the man. But honestly, uh, you should probably follow him on Instagram because like his baits don't last long on his website. So if you want a chance at getting his baits, you typically have to be on Instagram to see the post or the story yeah. because they usually only last a few minutes. So if you just go there and check randomly on his, you're not going to see much. Um, you get to see like stuff that's out of stock. That looks really cool. Um, <clears throat> what are we sipping on tonight? Uh, I am uh, with the usual Kraken and Diet Dr. Pepper. I stepped it up instead of Diet Dr. Thunder. I actually went with the uh, name brand stuff tonight. I have, I have just a little little bit this is jared miller is one mm -hmm. of my buddies and he brought over just a little little thing of uh honey moonshine mm. so like you i make like an ounce go the entire night sure water it down with the ice cubes back back when evan williams was a big uh, oh yeah of the bass nation evan Tennessee williams honey, honey. Yeah, I was, was a like big fan of that. straight syrup. It was like just taking it right off of the honeycomb. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was easy to drink. It was easy to yep. drink too much of. <clears throat> but uh, we get back then we there was like that rebate promotion they had. You could get that stuff like cheap. <clears throat> Do you think uh, like Cruz and and uh, Quinn just had cases of that? 
I don't know. I feel they like had to. If, if it was Quinn had way more than Cruz. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have 4% body fat by dipping into the liquor every night. Yeah. He seems like a little more serious, and he probably works out a lot more than... Jason Cohn was definitely more average dude. I fished with him on Amistad when I was a co there once. He was a fun guy to fish with. Listen, it's not... It's not a sin. I mean, like I said, it's just a just a little. I just want the flavor. Tastes like honey. All right, let's see here. Um, Are we pulling up fantasy fishing. A couple of questions here. All right. Uh, just Okeechobee punchers or winders. Both. I think both will be strong. To be honest. Both. Hundred percent. Both. It's going to be extremely similar to the Invitational that just took place like three days ago. And chatterbaits were a big deal in that. Trip. Yeah, I mean, look at look at what Brett Height did and stuff like that. So, but I mean, also look at Latimer. I thought it was interesting what Latimer did. He had such a good tournament, and he was throwing a spinning rod. And the number one thing in Florida is how you can't land those big ones on spinning rods. I didn't get to watch as much of the live as I'd wanted to because work sucks. <laughs> but it seemed like maybe some of those guys that were fishing a little more finesse or just dragging off the clumps or the heads mm -hmm. did well earlier. But then it was the winders and the people fishing up in the emergent that came on later in the tournament. Yeah. It was your typical Florida tournament. Blast them and but I think... no one blasted them three days in a row. Right. I think if, if somebody's going to walk away with it, they're going to have to like follow the fish move up with them move out with them adjust like one day they might crack a bag on a chatterbait the next day it might be on a skinny dipper the next day it might be flipping right like yeah if you're really gonna blow it out you're gonna have to kind of adjust i agree and the four days will be different plus saturday it's gonna blow 16 to 20 so that's gonna really throw a hitch into some of the game plans and i mean we know okeechobee's not fun at 16 so it'll be interesting to see and what areas less... play submergent vegetation yeah so i talked to a couple guys who who had really good tournaments in the invitationals um and what they said was that that it was the weights were deceptively good that uh there were a lot a lot of those big fish did not have the mat the weight on them that they should have based on the head and that a lot of those fish came out of three or four very specific areas on the lake and that there was a lot more dead water i mean if you follow scott martin you've been you know he kind of chronicles some of the things that okeechobee's going through politically as far as uh water level and the coast i, I don't know enough about it to get into it but it's it's not a good situation and he said that you know they they were shocked at how many fish and how much weight there was based on how much dead water really was up there that the weights don't really reflect how tough it is yeah and i think the other thing is right the wind i think has the potential to be more impactful because with less submergent vegetation it's not going to filter mm -hmm. as fast no I, and then also with the water being higher when it does get windy it's going to get deeper into the shallow to make that stuff muddier so it's potentially harder to avoid the mud when the water's high with less vegetation. So if it gets windy, it could fish even smaller. Yeah. Uh, Roger checking in from the Montana. What's up, Roger? Hmm. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be, and it should help, right? Slightly smaller field. With the yep. elites, not way smaller though, right? Uh, so my question is, uh, are release fish going to play? Is anyone going to roll right outside the, the marina and start winding or flipping or maybe throwing a drop shot or, or wacky worm sink or wacky rig sinko or something? And Because, I mean, 170, almost everybody had a limit, tons of 16, 17-pound bags. I mean, you do the math on that. How many, how many were in that? Like 100, let's do 170 times like – 170 times 4.5, which is about an average because almost everyone yep. had a limit, equals 765. Multiply that times two, that's 1,500 bass that were released somewhere right plus along there. 200 on the final day. Correct. So, so you're looking almost at 2,000 bass. Almost 2,000 bass, all of which were the biggest ones they could catch from the lake being released right there. 
Does that does is that how I guess I've never <clears throat> been to an MLF invitational pro how pro yeah circuit. it's it's just Do like every just other them? tournament yeah well, I mean no they've got they got or... release boats yeah they got release boats but still but how far are you going out into Lego yeah Kobe? I mean you're not so I guess you could go back and look what was the wind on on all those days so if it's super windy I mean you're going out past the break wall and dumping them if it's calm you might maybe go in a couple miles I don't know if they had trailers they typically have never seen them have a, a trailer fish from an event like an elite series event or anything they usually just yeah, have them right there i've never i don't know enough about like <clears throat> okeechobee like what's the practice there on how they do it but like, yeah they just could dump, play. Them, dump them back into the bowl but the thing is the bowl they're gonna just right to the nearest bank right like they're yeah yeah like they're I mean, you go would think that it'd 18 be 18 miles across vast nothing to get to yep. the other bank Yep. Good luck, Brendan. Hope you have a good stream. Um, so what type of anglers are we looking for in this tournament? Uh, me, <clears throat> I'm looking for people that understand grass, uh, spring fishing, uh, guys that have a little bit of experience in Florida, you don't need a ton, but a little bit helps. And then I think mostly I'm looking at power anglers in this tournament and people that are not afraid to get shallow. I feel like Okeechobee fish is a little different than other Florida lakes where the Harris chain, even St. John's, uh, the other, they have more offshore opportunities to me. Okeechobee has very limited offshore opportunities. There's some offshore grass and some things, but you know, mm -hmm. like Buddy Gross winning Dragon Carolina rigs and, you know, slow roll and swim baits on like half ounce heads. That stuff doesn't really play on Okeechobee. Um, so it really more fits the power fisherman to me. I don't know if you think otherwise. 100% agree. <clears throat> so it, it narrows it down a little bit, I think. And like somebody like normally a Buddy Gross, I would look at on other Florida lakes, probably not looking at hard uh, this week. Uh, at Okeechobee, mm -hmm. for instance. I agree. And Okeechobee changes a lot, too, mm -hmm. because of that water level. Local Mike says, attorneys local have, to have to dump outside of the lock. There you go. I'll be interested to see if the Rim Canal plays on Saturday. Didn't see it's much of it in the MLF, did you? Not deep. I would, what do you want to say? Eight foot? Never been there, but I <clears throat> yeah, I feel like eight, ten. Like yeah, that, I've I've much. been there twice. But not I mean, I wasn't like fishing it. I was covering it, so I didn't notice that stuff. Corey Johnson just had a third place on Harris Chain. Does that translate to Okeechobee? <laughs> somewhat just yeah if like, you if you understand florida and you understand grass it's gonna help a lot of the guys i mean there's very few guys that are just dominant on or very good on some lakes in florida and just atrocious on others uh there's like nuances to each of those like if i was going to take the big four which are going to be uh which are going to be the Kissimmee chain which is obviously like cypress toho Kissimmee, uh the uh the harris chain Mm -hmm. which is, you know, Big Harris, Little Harris, Dora, Apopka, uh, and Griffin. And then you have the St. John's River, which is obviously the river. The closer you get to the city, you got it gets tidal, a little brackish, and then you can go all the way down into, what is that, Lake George? Mm -hmm. Down there at the other end with the eelgrass and the beds. And then uh, Okeechobee, which is basically just a big bowl where a lot of the water... Uh, level changes based on wind so you have a lot of areas that get sucked out when there's a wind because i think it's like the fifth fifth largest freshwater lake freshwater lake a hundred percent in the united states obviously <clears throat> taking the great lakes out of play there mm -hmm. so the, i mean that's kind of your breakdown on tournament waters in florida yeah. uh but i would say i would say like harris chain and Kissimmee chain translate more to each other than like the St. John's River in Okeechobee or the Harris chain in Okeechobee or Kissimmee chain in Okeechobee. Yep. And I guess there is kind of a tide at a lot, uh, 
Okeechobee. <clears throat> There's a wind tide from what I hear. Like it'll blow <clears throat> and push like six inches yeah. of water back yep. and forth. Wind tide. Uh, what's freaking crazy is they also catch like tarpon and saltwater fish in Okeechobee. I'd never heard that. Yep. I mean, um, not like on a daily basis, but it's been done. Let's see here. I think somebody said the one, the guy that was, he said Coot Bay for retreads. Oh, well, I'm sure there'll be a bunch oh. of people in Coot Bay then. Yeah. So if you, uh, if there's any elite anglers low key watching this because they had a bad practice, uh, Coot Bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's public info. Yeah. Uh, Austin Felix has been known to be lurking in the shadows of the, uh, the chats here. So. <laughs> yep. Snook. I've heard of Snook. Snook uh, and Tarpon getting caught. But yeah, I mean, probably the biggest thing, right? You, you roll down to Florida, you get a top 10, you're feeling good, you're confident in your decisions, you're fishing confident. That's probably the biggest thing that translates is just fishing good, feeling good, keep it going. <clears throat> Agreed. Keith Poche is not fishing this event. He well, he's, uh, Did he make the cut? No, he can't because it's off limits. Well, he didn't fish the Invitational. Oh, he can't. Well, no, he can't fish this event because he cannot miss a BPT event right. or else he he's gets for kicked sure out. Fishing, he's for sure not fishing tomorrow. But if he fails to make the cut at the BPT, he could show up for day two of this event. Oh, I never thought about that. <clears throat> That's what I understand. But I so thought that if you I wouldn't miss, put him on your fantasy roster, let's put it. But I thought you get DQ'd for the for the tournament if you miss a day that you are eligible to fish i think that's and the bpt rule no the, the bpt that's... kicks you out for the whole freaking year like if you miss a day that you're eligible and you don't have like a medical exemption or something hmm. you are done for the year on the bpt how accommodating is that to people trying to make a living as anglers rich yeah i, I hadn't heard about the bass but on the elite series i think it's just that tournament so you're saying if he can't make tomorrow, then there's no sense showing up at all from what you I understand. I think that that's the way I get it. Hmm. Like, it'd be different if he was, like, having a kid, and then he was like, I can get there on day two, because that would be, like, an extenuating right. circumstance, but competing on the BPT doesn't count. I, I think. We'll I don't want to speak out of turn. But I do know if you miss a day that you're supposed to fish on the BPT, they're like, hey, have a nice life. Thanks for your deposits. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, let's see here. Cliff Prince or Kobe Krieger? Kobe Krieger. I go Cliff Prince. I don't. Kobe Krieger has not done well for me. I know no. Kobe Krieger has a ton of he like guided out of Martin's Marina and tons of experience and been down there forever. But uh, I just don't trust him. Ish was pretty high on Kobe Krieger. I, I agree. I heard that, but like as a stats guy, I don't feel like. I feel all that great about. I don't feel. I feel like I picked him in Florida plenty of times, and it's never worked out for me. So I'm just mm -hmm. off the Kobe Krieger train. <clears throat> and Cliff Prince, actually, even though he's the Prince of Palaka and home to St. John's, he's got a pretty good track record at Okeechobee. What I looked up, so I I go Cliff Prince. Actually, I didn't pick either one of them, but um, I once got into a late night heated dart battle with uh, Kobe Krieger. At Lake Champlain. Nice. Yeah. I'm probably more likely Randall to pick Fart. Kobe Krieger at Champlain than I am at Okeechobee. How's that? Okay. We haven't picked any dark horses yet. We're, we're still just <clears throat> warming up here. Uh, let's see here. Do we want to talk about actual picks? your call sure why not let's first let's uh uh just in case anybody's watching that uh <clears throat> isn't signed up for fantasy fishing a you should uh join the omnia fishing group b you should join the bass talk live group c you should join the largest private group which is beat Hellabass. uh password is visor all caps pangrack <laughs> are you in the beat Hellabass group i think so yeah all right. <clears throat> I tried to join it early, earlier. I don't know if I've... Has it been the same password for a number of years? Uh, the last two years has been the same, but it, you would have had to put a new password in this year. 
No. All right. And I'm not in it. I tried to join it, and I thought it that I said it was. <clears throat> uh, no, I have jigs for pigs. Okay, that was the that was two years ago. It's uh, capital visor, all caps. Oh. All right, man. So there you go. And so I think. I don't know if Omni is doing any prizes. Uh, you're giving away a spinner pole from Denali. Is that right? Yep. 7.4 lithium. And that's just year end? Yeah. And are you only traditional or do you have a drain the lake group? Oh, you can have a different group for drain the lake? No, but you can enable so that you can play drain the lake. <clears throat> I don't know. So, I should. Oh, my. No, he does not. Uh, what the heck is drain the lake group? I mean, do you not play during the lake? Uh, I usually forget. Oh my gosh! How do I add it? So you go into, so you go into. Uh, I'll just go into my group, and then uh, if you go to edit next to your name, yep. then you should be able to scroll down, and it'll you can either play just fantasy fishing, just jo- both, both contests. Save settings. There you go. <clears throat> he's new here guys give him give him some cut him some slack does that mean you're gonna find another spinner pole for the drain the lake winner no they're just okay. playing for pride no they're They'll playing a shout for, out on, they're a playing shout out for on pride BTL. a shout nope. out on btl not even that they're playing nope. for pride you won't even get your name mentioned if you win the league on btl <laughs> you get <okay>? shun <laughs> <clears throat> So yeah, we could do. Game, we could do. Nothing. We'll do another. We'll do another. Uh, we'll do another rod. You'll get some old uh, Lake Fork creatures if he finds them in the bottom of a, a garage tub somewhere. That is that like the new? Drugs. Is that I've never. I think I've got. Let me see if I've got a drink. Oh, there's one person that joined it already. Uh, Everybody should automatically be in once you open it. No. No. Hmm. Really. I did do it for this one, though. Oh, yeah, I got a winning Drain the Lake team, no doubt. Am I not in Bass Talk Live's group? (laughs) (laughs) I think you started late, maybe. No, I didn't. There's like over a couple thousand people in it. Well, you come on strong. Oh, look, it only shows two people in Drain the Lake. That's weird. Yeah. Me and Carol, what's up? <clears throat> All right, so let's get into uh, teams strategy. All right, let's let's run the people through some of our thought process of. Uh... <clears throat> so I, I I went just out of the gates, went against, and did the cardinal sin of picking Steve Kennedy in the uh, first term of the year. He's oh, got wow. a pretty good track record there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a bold move. It should set up for him. He shouldn't get too confused. Likes a swim jig, likes a swim bait. I feel like he loves a Senko. Like, I think he's going to, for bucket E, it's a low risk, high reward situation, in my opinion. All right. Uh, I I did the same thing in Group E. I went with Hank Cherry. Uh, He's cashed seven checks in Florida, which I think is surprising. And anytime you can get someone that's had seven good tournaments in Florida, and plus, what a lot of people don't realize about Hank Cherry is when Ronald A. Davis and Rad Lures were invented the chatterbait, um, mm-hmm. you know, there were a number of Carolina guys back in the mid to early 2000s that were going over there and helping assemble those baits. Mm. Uh, and Hank Cherry was one of them. I mean, they were delivering baits to Hank Cherry in cardboard boxes at tournaments the Davis family was. So right. he's very familiar with the winding bait. I know that a lot of people tend, tend to pin him into the uh, jerk bait category. Uh, and he's not, I mean, he's not the world's best flipper, but I mean, the guy's cashed like seven checks in Florida and he's in the E bucket. So yeah, he, he's and he's won back to back classics on, on bladed jigs too. Like, yep. I want to say some, like Gunnersville. I think there was some bladed jig fish. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so, um, otherwise, I think Wes Logan's an interesting pick. 
he he did pretty well flipping and punching when he went head to head with Caleb Kufal in Gunnersville. Yeah, uh, he he likes braid, heavy rods, swim jigs. I mean, one of these guys that we have that is new is going to come out and catch him, and it's going to be out of nowhere. But you're basically just taking a crapshoot, so you're hedging your bets by going with someone with experience, like a, a Mark Menendez, a Wes Logan, an Ike and Ellie. Yeah, I mean a Hank Court? Cherry. I feel like I don't know anything about Kyle Norsetter, even though he lives a couple hours from me in Wisconsin, but it is not uncommon to see guys from Wisconsin and Minnesota to go down to Florida and understand grass and do well right out of the game. Yeah, uh, and if there is a swim jig by David Williams is lethal with a swim jig. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how he is with it around grass. I know he's usually throwing it around docks, but, I mean, the guy's not afraid to throw a swim jig. Yeah, and I hear a lot of people. I don't know much about Brian Smith. Come from the NF NPFL. Brian, he's, he's a California dude. People talk very high of him. <clears throat> yeah, he. Uh, so when we both made the final day at uh, Hartwell this past year, and my, I don't even know how this happened, but on the final day on the way to the ramp, my brake pad broke off. Mm. So it was straight metal on metal. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm fishing the final day. I really don't give a damn. So I just, I mean, grinded it, got the boat in the water. And afterwards, he he finished like second in that one, I think. And like, I would have been crushed because that's ounces from the classic. And he heard my truck and he like stopped. He's like, hey, man, can I help you? Can I drive you anywhere? Can we do anything? Do you need anything? And I mean, I'd never met him before. Right. It was super nice of him. Anyway, I ended up having to stay in South Carolina till Monday, but it is what it is. There you go. Inside info. Daniel Glenn is in Kyle Norsetter's Bass Club chatterbait specialists so there you go dark horse kyle so if you want a, if you want to go with a one less than one percenter north setter is your guy yep uh that's a good pick in group d that's a safe that's a really good pick yeah um look who's clay's here what's up clay <clears throat> all right anything else bucket we should move on to bucket d here i'm ready for bucket d yeah uh so i went heron i feel like he's a guy that's been okay, but not his normal self the last year or two. I think he's going to be mad at him. This is going to fit his wheelhouse. He loves to flip, not afraid to, to probably wind a swim jig around. Um, I think uh, definitely has plenty of Okeechobee experience from his days at FLW. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just think he's a good, like I went chalk, as you can see in some buckets. So I would say Matt Heron's kind of one of my kind of mid tier. <laughs> low yep, percentage so guys. <clears throat> so, uh, I went Keith Combs. Keith really likes Florida. I've talked to him about it before. He like just he just likes Florida, mm -hmm. um, and especially with it being more, uh, I just think that he likes Florida, and that's why I went with Keith Combs in Bucket D. And he's been underperforming. There's going to be a year where Keith Combs finishes, you know, makes a run at the Angler of the Year. And I thought it would be twenty, and I thought it would be twenty-one, and I thought it would be twenty-two. And his fishing obviously doesn't suck because you look—he's won three Toyotas over that time period, and an Open, and a, and a Bassmaster Open, and but, almost one at Lacrosse. He was yeah, top two or three. So I'm going Keith Combs in Bucket D. Couple guys that stick out there. Uh, it would be hard, and I've—if you look at his stats, he has not slowed down. He's 71 years old. Second oldest guy on the tour behind Rick Clun, I think it's 75, 76. Uh, that's Larry Nixon. Obviously, he loves fishing a worm. The iconic Bassmaster show where he jumps, he says, Good Lord, what a fish. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's in Florida. Yep. From back in the 80s. So, Mega Box, right? Yep. Uh, but I mean, dude, this isn't, you got Cliff Prince, you got Bertie Schultz. You have Kyle Welcher, you have Clark Wenlit, Kobe Krieger, Matt Heron, John Cruz. I mean, all those guys you could make a case for. I think Welcher. Um, yeah, lots of. Yeah, hundred percent Welcher. Yeah. All those guys. Uh, you want to go? You um, really want to go off the board? You might have a guy throwing three pound test in Florida and Koyu Fujita. <laughs> In the rim canal, probably. <laughs> he 100% will be doing something in the rim canal with five or six pound test. And he might win it. Like, I don't feel like you can count out some of that these guys, dude is like... going to redefine 
finesse fishing on on at the professional level within the next three years, Rich? Right here. Mark it down. February 15th, 8.48 p.m. <clears throat> Noted. Uh, yes, Combs did win Malak several years ago on the AOI event. A big football jig. I don't know much about Alex Weatherall, other than he's a northern angler, mm-hmm. kind of Connecticut. Could be okay. Uh, uh, can we just skip bucket C? <laughs> yeah, like, so if you, uh, you know, there's a good debate, right? Like, what per- and people are afraid of percentages. There are times <clears throat> to avoid the percentages, and there are times to embrace the percentages. And to me, if you want to lose your, sh- yeah, I mean, dude, if you have enough balls to not go against it and it hits, then you got a 300 point lead on two thirds of fantasy fishing. You got a 200 point lead on two thirds of fantasy fishing. If, if it, if it doesn't hit, you're still okay because it didn't hit for two thirds of the guys. And if right. it does hit, it's a wash because two thirds of the people picked it. Right. And like just playing the odds, like, yeah. Sure, could you pick somebody that beat Scott Martin because yeah, Scott absolutely. I mean, dude, and you could, took Schmidt because he got seventh, and like, wow, you took a big risk to get five yeah. points. But I mean, you know, Sokup's gonna, he's probably gonna be on some sneaky stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caleb Summerall's at home there. Uh, Brock Mosley's not a bad pick. Brian Schmidt's a swim jig expert. Uh, Try Logan Latuso right. is is a, a rookie who's probably going to be comfortable down there because he's a Louisiana guy. Mosley loves chatterbait. Mm-hmm. I mean, Brandon Card always seems to show up early in the year doing something I'm, goofy. I'm uh, off card, not because like he's recovering from that mm-hmm. meningitis. But he's got, so what I, does he have Bell? Was it Bell's palsy? So he had some kind of meningitis, which left him with Bell's palsy, which. I heard Menendez saying he had it several years ago and he basically mm-hmm. had to take a whole year off. I think Kim Stricker had it once too. Yeah. So, I mean, like I, <laughs> I'm rooting for him. I hope yeah. it goes well. You talk to some people that say that they have dealt with it or been around people. They're questioning how he could possibly fish this year. So from that perspective, I won't be putting him on my Okeechobee roster. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sir South Jersey oh. says Scott really hasn't done anything in the past three years. Scott also hasn't fished very much in the elite series on a lake that his family has a marina named after him. Right. Like, Scott has more time on Okeechobee than the entire other 103 anglers combined. Combined. Group B is probably the, in in my opinion, the toughest ones are Group A and B. Yeah. Uh, I'm going like hack stack them a little. Like I feel like sometimes early in the year. Yeah, they did a little twisted uh, stuff little bit, in there. Well, it feels like they they that's, pretty accurately stacked them this year. Yeah, that's Bowman just throwing a couple odd balls in there just to. I could see him just going, hey, hey, "We'll put them all in this bucket." Yeah. Who do you have in Group B? I mean, I'm going Hackney. Yeah, uh, so much. I, I went safe and B and C. Um, mm-hmm. But dude, you, I don't think you could go wrong. Now, Austin Felix doesn't have a great track record down there, but but. I don't think you can go wrong with all the Northern guys in here either. I mean, it's heavily Minnesotan in this group. You got Downey, you got fighter, you got Austin Felix. Then you've got Pat Schlapper. I mean, it's like all the Northern guys in this one. Uh, And to me, Palmer is basically uh, Tyler Rivette 2.0. A hundred percent. He just keeps Uh, catching him. Yeah. He fishes Uh, like he lives and works farm dude, run the freaking store, show up every day, take care of your business, go home. Yeah, I mean, Prosnick, Hallman. Yep, yep. Cobb. I mean, there's lots of good options here, but I, I, Hackney has been on fire the last two or three years in February. <clears throat> He's strong, strong in Florida. It matches his style probably better than any of the other Florida fisheries. I think it's a, it's an easy pick. I agree. And then A, I went a little off chalk. Everybody's hot on John Cox, and I think... Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be shocked if John Cox has a good tournament, but I don't think he's a 40% lock. I agree. If you listen to the deal, I mean, he's fished 23 events there. He only has four top tens. I mean, that's four more top tens than a lot of guys have there, but that's not a very high percentage. No. Um, So I think both the Johnstons have a ton of experience in Florida, in Okeechobee. They both have done very well. Um, I actually think Corey has a slightly better resume on um, Okeechobee and he's a little bit lower percentage. I know a lot, there's a lot more people picking Chris 
Mm-hmm. A lot more people talking about him. Um, so that's why I went Corey. But I think I, I, I know some people I know Ish was all excited about Polonic, but uh I think the, the last time Polonic won the AOI, he had a triple digit finish. And I think I remember him talking this year about like holy cow, I got out of Florida with two chat like a elated just to top fit. Right. It's the same with Zaldane. Zaldane has not ever figured out Florida. Yeah. Like I'll pretty much pick him the rest of the year, but I won't touch him in Florida. Yeah. So take Poche off your list. Because he's not going to fish, or he's only going to fish one day. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> I think Caleb Kufal could be good down here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, there's Robertson half one. Ha- Robertson won a, like a, a nation or a team event down here, but that was in the fall. Um, I feel like Gussie's had some good MLF events. If you're looking for people more dark horse, uh, I think Walters is going to have a strong year. I think Walters is the guy you could pick in Bucket A every event the rest of the year in Bucket yep. A if you want to. <clears throat> I'm going Drew Cook. He yeah. just he's a sight and I know it's not going to be a sight fishing guy but he just he gets it. He's from down there and he he gets it. He knows what he needs to be doing. He'll he'll freaking flip a fighting frog and get right where he needs to be and catch a couple big ones. Clay says Brian New had one of the highest winning weight production. Yeah, that's cuz he's just high on life right now. Yeah. I think he's having a kid, he's loving life, he's got the new Spro wrap. Everything's just rolling for Brian New right now. So he's I think he's eager to get yeah, things I think, going. I think this could be a good event for Swindle. I don't know that I'm going to pick him, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if he's a... Sorry, he won his open in Florida, didn't he? I don't remember. Maybe. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, you guys, people that went BP, I, I don't know. I, I'm not on that train, but good luck to you. The only downside to picking a Johnson Johnson right now is because they're both in the same bucket. And usually whichever one you pick, it's the other one that does well. Yep. So there you go. And then our weights are fairly similar. I got 86.11. You have what? 84.4. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I think that win day will be interesting. I think you might see a big drop off that day and then kick it back up to the mid mid 20s which will be about 84 i'm sure after day one we're all be going like man i knew i should have went higher than 84 pounds <laughs> but then after day three you'd be like ha, i don't know if they're gonna get to 84 pounds <laughs> like yeah um i don't know most people think Corey or everybody knows chris is better than Corey. well only Corey only needs to be better in this event <clears throat> um all right so Drain the Lake. So Drain the Lake, <clears throat> for those that haven't played, is an eliminator style game. A little more of a like Ronnie Moore likes to call it the thinking man's game. Uh, because you gotta kind of plan your season out a little bit, at least. I mean advanced. once you pick them, they're gone. Yeah, once you use them, they're gone. And now we have more anglers now because I think last year we had 94. And now we have 104. Yeah. So when you use eight per event, so you use 80 of them. So there's a little more that aren't gonna be used. Um, but basically it says set your buckets, but you're really just setting a lineup. Yeah. And you pick eight. Um, yeah. So here's my eight. I'm going to burn Scott. So am I could, could argue saving him for like Champlain or something, but I'm not. No. Uh, Heron. I put him oh. on my regular team, but okay. I could save him for lay Lake, but I'm going to use him here. I think there's more for this to be. Yep. But there's enough other players in that bucket. Mm-hmm. You could make an argument. Canterbury. I got him. Hackney. I'm saving him. Yeah. Cliff Prince. Uh I got him. Drew Cook. It was saving either using him. here or uh at uh the next one, Seminole. Yeah, that's but, what I'm yeah. saving him for. I'm burning Welcher here. He could be a Lay Lake choice too. Um and then uh Brandon Lester, which the other place I thought about using him was at the classic. But I didn't. Yeah. I've got uh, Ray Hanselman. All right. I'm not sure why, to be quite honest. Well, sometimes got, you get down towards the end of it and you're just like, mm. yeah, I got, I put John Cox on my team here. Uh, I got Hunter Shryock. He likes Florida. They've spent the Shryocks have spent a ton of time in Florida. I've got Brian Schmidt, one of the best swim jigger fishermen in the world. Grass fishing. Yep. I've got Pat Schlapper. Schlopper. Schlopper. Mm-hmm. Ah, not ah. Yep. 
I've got a picture of me and Pat holding a uh, giant black worm. Uh, I got Cliff Prince <laughs> at the classic. It was like a big bite trick stick. It was like 30 yep, pounds. I've seen, I've seen it. Mullen. Cliff Prince, Scott Martin, and Scott Canterbury. Solid. Can't argue any of those. I don't know why I put Ray Hanselman on there. Why did I put Ray Hanselman on there? Because you couldn't find anywhere else to use him, and he's just a home run hitter. I don't know. Yeah, that's my team. <clears throat> Solid. A lot of people using Bernie Schultz is what I've seen. And I'm like, you, no. Bernie Schultz is a uh, – save him for the St. Lawrence River. Yep. Um, so here's what I I'll, – I'll share what I have here. Um, so I have created the Hellabass Members Only Drain the Lake Planner Google Sheet document. Zoom in here a little bit. So I basically have this all set up with a Google Sheet script and rosters. So you can have pull down menus to pick your. Oh, wow. Team. And then it takes a little minute for the like the script to catch up, depending on how fast your Internet connection is. But once you pick Scott Martin, it won't let you pick them the rest of the year. OK. And so like and then it's got a separate roster. Right. So like your JT Tompkins, your. I don't know who else is a classic Casey Martin or Casey Smith, right? Is this like a result of your day job that you can do all this stuff? I built it quite a bit, but then I did hire somebody on Fiverr to write the script to, to better like lock it in. (laughs) (laughs) That's freaking cool. Yeah. So that's how it saves a lot of time and really lays it out in a, so for those that are members, uh, uh, no, nobody else can see it because what you end up doing is if, you, if you're if you a member, you can download it from the link on the YouTube channel and then you just make a copy of it that's your own and then nobody else can see it. So if anybody wants to get it, you can join as a member. It's another perk of being a member of the channel. So just something fun. All right. So that's, that's how I plan Drain the Lake. Um, any other, like, do you got any other nuggets during the lake you want to just throw people? Obviously, I don't want you to like go through your whole roster for the year, but like, <laughs> what are a couple other like sneak or maybe give us one or two other like, think like, about so the this. way I, I mean, I, I have played it sporadically, but so here's the other way you can play it, Rich. Sure. You can play it for specific tournaments. So if you don't play yeah. every week, your roster is still available. So, like, mm-hmm. let's say you just want to absolutely go off on the St. Lawrence. You can not play and then have all the Northern guys available for the last three events out of the year. Or the drain the lake prizes are not that great for each event though. No, but I'm just saying that that could be a strategy that you could employ if you wanted to. Sure. You can win a $200 Mercury gift card. Mercury. Oh, what is member? You also receive a $500 Bass Pro gift card for For each, each event. Okay. So that makes it worth it. 500 bucks for Bass Pro. Like it's your small uh, basket. Yeah. And then like second prize is like $200. Yep. That's what I I mean. So that's one way to do it. But uh, you have to use the home run guys on that lake on that lake or all the time or completely avoid the home run guys on that lake because then the way you win is by not having Scott Martin on your team this week if he weighs in 10 pounds. Those right. are your two. It's it's like playing blackjack, right? You're either always hitting on on certain numbers, or you're never hitting. You can't just be like, "Oh, I'm going to hit on 16." Like you either always hit on 16 when you sit down, or you never hit on 16. You have to approach the drain lake the same way. Yeah, but but the so the year end prize is a trip all of trade trade to fish with Zona on some secret small mouth lake. So that's pretty cool. But I feel like you can almost load up with heavy hitters throughout the year. Yeah. And actually, for the for the record, you get double points for picking a winner. So, like, that's really mm-hmm. how you do well is by nailing yeah. the winner in almost every event on one of those eight. So, like, think about this. Think about, like, if Scott Martin hits it, then, like, everybody has him, right? There's but a you got to consistently people. nail right. the winner. That's but let's say like that. Alex Weatherall wins at 1.5%, you just gain 300 points on the field. Absolutely. But if you don't pick the winner in the next four, it doesn't matter. Yep. Good point. But 
Um, so what do you think? Christy at St. Clair, AJ says he wins 50% of the time he goes there. Yeah. Well, also a lot of the time, the first couple of times when he went there, he was like one of the only guys utilizing forward facing yeah, technology, the early, the early Garmin panoptics. He was, he was a panoptics guy and was not saying anything. Yeah, I think I did not use them. I'm using them at the classic. I think there's a, I think the classic sets up well for Christie. Yeah. I think he could go back to back. I'm not guaranteeing it, but like I would not be shocked. That would be, I mean, it wouldn't surprise any of us. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, a, 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 a Mercury gift card, probably looking at apparel, maybe a yeah. oil, maybe a prop. Right. Like I'm sure they'll let you order a you want to use your five hundred gift card on a twenty three thousand dollar two hundred horsepower yeah. uh pro XS. I'm sure they'll take it off the top for you. I think Nick um, was talking about Todd Klein on the show today. He was on the show, he worked for Quicksilver for sixteen years and then he asked, Oh, is yeah, that like he's that, he making a joke? Yeah, but, Mercury yeah. or no, he was like the actual Quicksilver clothing. Yeah. So you said you talked to Hallman after day two. Yeah, practice. so um it's late at night. I'll give you the scoop on him. I have not talked to Soka. Um, but he was in high spirits after the first day of practice. It's high spirits with not much company, which is either really good or really bad in a non traditional pattern, which it's not giving anything away if you know John Soka because he's always by himself in a non-traditional pattern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> always, 100% of the time. Hallman had had a few bites, uh, was very positive, loved the vibe, and it was the calmest that I've talked to him. I mean, he was relaxed and enjoying the experience. Didn't think, I mean, didn't say anything like, I'm on him, didn't say anything like, it's tough. Just said, had a few bites, Really freaking feeling good. Not nice. about the tournament, about being on the Elite Series in general. Sure. That's probably a good place to be. Yeah. So there's the inside scoop on on Hallman and John. Have not talked to John. Talked to Brad for 20 minutes after day two. Have not bugged them since. Nice. So let me just think here. Look at other <clears throat> sneaky drain the lake insights. Um what people may not think of. So there's several locals to Lay Lake, especially new guys. So Will Davis Jr. and uh, Dave Gaston are both from yep. Sylacauga, Alabama. <laughs> uh, Red Wine spent a lot of time on St. Clair. Um, you know, I touched on the Bernie Schultz thing. Yep. As, as obvious it is for some, that's kind of a sneaky one, in my opinion. Um, but hmm. I use Kennedy at Santee Cooper. I feel like he's just about a lock as there is on Santee Cooper, like a safe place to use Kennedy. Yeah, I could also see him on one of the blue back lakes. Sure. They go to Murray, right? Do they go to Murray or Lanier? Murray. Yeah, I could. I'm going to use him on Murray. It'd be interesting <laughs> to see what Paul Mueller does this year. Yeah, I mean, he's got the Camus, so that's always a plus. Scott's going way too deep into this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's maybe just talk. Let's. I think we've, we've covered enough fantasy. Yep. I know somebody was asking about kind of some like kind of predictor type. Um, I kind of teed these up a little bit. So yeah, let's AOI rookie of the year, classic champ. <clears throat> AOI. You don't necessarily give one, but, or just however you want to take it. Okay. Hold on. Let me get this. You want me to go up. first? Yeah, go for it. So I think AOI to me, I feel like Walters with, uh, Multiple Carolina stops. He's figured out the Northern Smallies how not to bomb up north, I think, now. Uh, so I think Walters, I think he's been in the top five the last three years. And I think mm -hmm. he's, 
eliminated the smallmouth Achilles heel probably now by spending extra time up there. And now he's got two home state ponds. I think this is the year for Patrick Walters. I, uh, I think we're in the middle of a dynasty. I think Paul and it gets number three. There you go. Neither one would be a shock. No, I, I mean, tell I, me I don't where, think we went way out in left field for everyone. Tell me where Paul and Nick is not going to catch him. Uh, Okeechobee. <laughs> That's besides that. Yeah. So, I mean, like, if, Oke- if, if, if Paul and Nick comes out of Okeechobee with a top 50, then Done. watch out. You're in trouble. Yeah. Maybe Sabine. Uh, rookie of the year, I'm going Soka. I would, that would be my, the, my top pick as well. Yep. Although I think if I had to pick somebody else that's more rookie-ish, maybe Cooper Gallant. I agree. Cooper's still really, really young, though, and he spent a lot, a lot of time practicing for the Opens. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, so I see Cooper. The, the two-and-a-half-day practice, yeah. Like, Cooper will win Elite Series events. Cooper will be here 20 years from now. Cooper will contend for Angler of the Years. He's He's got it. Like, dude, the first time I met him, I mean, I'd heard about him and stuff. He's he's got he's got the Polinick factor. He, re, I mean, he really does. That's he's got the Jordan Lee and the Polinick factor. Classic champ. I mean, wouldn't surprise me. Oh, for this year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh God. Um. Classic champ for this year. I think I'm feeling Christy on a back to backer. I need to look at the field, but I mean, is there anybody this that knows it better than Gussie? You know, Gussie, his was a much more of a winter tournament when he won it. I don't think that's going to play. I'm not saying he can't catch him a different way. I think, I think he can go down to that, uh, the lake and do it. Like in Teleco? Yeah, in Teleco and do it. And went on smallmouth because think about like, so the last time they were there, think about how Ott, I mean, Ott was the runaway favorite. Right. And like a lot of his stuff was like little sneaky stuff, like a dock here, like a little rock deal here. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it was just kind of, is it a 18 inch smallmouth? And how big is it? Is the bass along around the dock or the dock post or the brush pile? So if you could go down into Kelico and get on those smallmouth, and we've seen that you can win a winter tournament on all smallmouth, because before they were talking about it having to be largemouth. So all he needs is some stable weather, and he can go down there and come in with 17 a day. I think that'll be strong. I think it's going to be much more of a spinnerbait, crankbait, shallow uh, power. Fish I agree mouth. with Clay. Hackney for the Classic would be ideal. It's the only thing that he hasn't won. So. I think it'll be fun. Should be a good classic. I think I might actually go down there just to network. And I'll hang see out. you there, Rich. I got to actually make plans to go, but I'm thinking about it. Catching myself and talking myself into it yet. Yeah. All right. So another couple that I kind of teed up to you. Yep. Who is a newcomer? I guess. Not newcomer, not like rookie, but like who's a two or three year angler that you expect to have kind of a breakout season? All right, let me pull up my. Uh, I think Matt Airy's going to have a really good year this year. And I know he's a veteran and he's been around forever, but he just hasn't had that. Well, that was going to be my next question. Like, who's a veteran that's going to like a big okay? Well, we'll season? go. Do with, I use that one for yeah, that one? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go with that one. A hundred percent for me. It's uh, Cody Huff. I can see that. Cody Huff is really strong on his electronics, on his sponsorship side, on his game. I mean, you talk to Rick Clun about him, and he's massively impressed with Cody Huff. Um, I think Cody Huff has a big breakout year this year in what is second or third season? Second season. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cody Huff, 100%. I thought I had somebody in mind, but it's not jumping out at me anymore. Hmm. 
I think a guy, yeah, I don't know if it's quite been three years, but a guy that's been super consistent, but I think actually might be like a little more elite push for like top 10 NY. I think Luke Palmer mm-hmm. this year, based on the schedule, I think he goes from like, yeah, he's been around a minute though. Yeah, it might be like four or five years. Yeah, but... he could be a top 10 guy easily. I could see that. Yeah. And I think I like Heron, like veteran, veteran that has a bounce back year, breakout year. I think had Heron. Yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, I mean, Welcher, that's another good one. I think he's a guy that's going to – I think last year was an anomaly. I think Welcher and Hamner had good classics but bad years last year, but I both expect them to have much better 2023s than 2022s. Um... I am going to give away this AFCO beanie tonight, by the way. Okay. Because I have so many beanies. So fair enough. If anybody wants a, an AFCO beanie that was touched by the Matt Pangrick himself. Yeah. That makes that it he real valuable. A little bit, but, um, but still. Makes it <clears> real valuable. <laughs> Question Can you buy a percentage of a pro? No. So uh, what was the guy from Oklahoma that did that? James. James Biggs from Texas did that, but he, yeah. I think he's talking about like fantasy fishing. Like in real life, people bought percentages of my buddy James because the championship was on the Red River where he thought he could win. So like they invested in him. And then if he had won the cup, which was half a million dollars at the time, they would have gotten a return on their investment. And then he refunded their money based on checks that he cashed throughout the year until he'd broken even. And then they got a percentage of everything past the break even mark as well. As it turned out, everybody ended up losing like $17 <laughs> depending on your shares. Like that was the average. Right. Was basically it's broke break even. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that's what you mean. Critical gravy, but uh, critical gravy. I don't know. Do you think we'll see a dirty 30 at the big O? Uh, I think we'll see some solid 20 pound bags. Could we see a 30? Yes. I don't think it's likely. <laughs> Um, if we do, it's going to be Hallman. How's that? I like it. He was my pick to win. Like you're, you're not, not on your fantasy team, but you're just picked to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I heard you kind of reviewing the, uh, I think you were checking out the, the, the standings at the BPT stage one. Mm-hmm. At the Harris chain and you were commenting on how it's just easier to digest the five fish limit you can just look at it and see and then i also noticed that uh you know mitch crane was leading for a long time and then shin took the lead and then lawyer ended up winning it and you know you're talking about this stuff look at this i'm passionate about this rich look at this drama along the cut line oh my god we won't have drama along the cut line anymore they're only gonna be five fish okay 20 top 20th move on right 24 14 is 18th place spencer shuffield right mm-hmm. 22 or 21 13 is 28th place so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven anglers within two pounds of the cut line in Florida. Tell me that one fish isn't critical there. Like, I mean, there was so much movement up and down and around and in and out. I buy that. It's the same dang thing. It's just, you can look at it and go before you didn't understand it. So like Michael Neal went 14, nine. So we had 23, eight on 10 fish, which obviously is a 2.3 pound average per fish. But now you're looking at it and you can tell, and you can go, Oh, Not a great day today for him. You can look at the total weights and you can put it into perspective. Like Jeremy Lawyer, they did not bite. He has 10 fish for 35 pounds. You can look at that and go, oh, for Florida, really tough on on Group A. 
if it just said 10 for 3507 and that was like his total I, anyway yeah so <clears throat> i have mixed feelings about it i kind of feel like <clears throat> they wanted to get back to like pay at least paying homage to the five fish or making the giving the yeah, five fish perspective make sure like for the stayed. for the traditional fan right is what they kept saying it was more about like i think it was more about like, keeping the anglers happy so they didn't leave sure well <laughs> I, you know, that's not what they said out loud right so yeah i mean there could be some of that did i say did i just say that out loud you, you could have yeah i mean i i, I think that's i mean the, the angler vote right definitely went in favor yes um so did and the social media vote did but it wasn't i didn't think it was overwhelming it was wasn't as lopsided as they yeah. made it sound i yeah. don't think <clears throat> um and uh the uh so I was gonna say, I, I, to me, I think it was a little bit lazy and quick reaction, in my opinion. I think they, you know, they spent three, four years or whatever it's been, like talking about how this is the purest form of the sport and it's the greatest form, and it truly set. Right? I mean, they, they really laid it on thick about how this sets it apart, and it's the, you know, the the best form of showing who's the best angler in the world and all that stuff, right? <clears throat> So I think to me, they could have done some things because I feel like now if they don't get the fan base support that they're hoping to get, that they've backed themselves into a corner where they have nowhere to go if they're not really like seeing the results that they want. It's a fair point, Rich. Uh, I think to me, what I would have done is thought been try to be more creative and like they could have had a big, big five bonus. They could have kept stats on the big five, kind of like how they do for heavy hitter, where there's a cumulative effect. Now, and all the other stuff, more... they are going with every fish. So, right. So, I mean, like the cups are every fish still. But I think that the are heavy they hitters doing is... the cups. The heavy hitters is yeah. Every so it's fish. now it's the team. The team is every fish. The heavy hitter is every fish, and I'm pretty sure the red crest is five. Mm -hmm. Um. So I don't know. I think and they... you get an extra six ounces if you catch a fish within two days of the full moon. Or on days that start in W. Yeah. I mean, there's a fine line of being too complicated. And, That's what I'm they, saying. I don't know. Like, they could have done, like, could they have done a 10 fish? Could they have done... I don't know. I don't know. Like, I me, like I the think... five. I'm fine with the five. Keep it with the yeah. five. I understand that it's been 15 and 12 and 7 and 6. A lot of Minnesota tournaments are 6. 5 is not a magic number, number, but 5 is the most relatable number. I like the five. True, but I think they could have given the five perspective and not gotten rid of the every fish counts. I agree. I agree. And then I think right they there is a tour that's doing there that. Are. You know that, Rich, right? What's that? You know there is a major tour on the West Coast that does that, the Apex yeah. Tour. There's a big circuit in Minnesota that does every fish count. No, they do both, five and every I fish. Know. I, yeah, no. It's yeah, a freaking like amazing qualify. concept. And then you yeah. qualify for the final round, and then your final round is five fish. But if you want to go in, and they just do number of keepers mm -hmm. or your or and your best five. So you can switch and change mm -hmm. strategies and qualify on it. It's the, literally when you really start to like dive into that format, there's so much strategy involved in it. It's awesome. Right, which I feel like, the back to my point, like I felt like they could have been more creative and kept some of those elements versus yeah. just coming back to where they That's basically fair. bashed why they left to begin with. So, That's fair. That's fair. Um, and I think they fueled the fire for some of the people that are very passionate and loyal to bass to begin with. So I don't know that it really, I don't know that they're gaining any of the true fans back. I could be wrong. That's fair. Um, so we'll see. Only time will tell. I'm not going to undo it now, but <laughs> yep. Um, let's see here. Uh, so speaking of BBT, what do we think? How's KVD going to go out? Is he going to go out with the bang? Is it going to just absolutely? Be a quiet in he the will. Dark? He will win one at some point this year. I haven't really studied the schedule to think about. Dude, it. he's he's not like decrepit. He's fifty five years old. He's won four of these things. People forget before the BPT dominated all the other. MLF stuff. I mean, and now it's five fish. So, I mean, now he's back to where he had what 28 wins, seven angler of the years, four Bassmaster Classic titles. 
But doubt. I don't know. Did he make the cut at? Uh... He had a very. He did not. So have not winning. Game. Not winning stage one is what you're saying. Did not. I think he's. I think he uh, fishes tomorrow. Okay, so he still got a chance. Yeah, but I think he also didn't have a very good first day. Let's see. Group B. He is in 39th place. He caught three fish for five pounds. He is... Yeah. Uh, Where's Poche in that group? He's in that group, right? Kevin is in next to last. Only Biffle. <laughs> so two guys that were supposed to <laughs> benefit from the five fish. <laughs> uh, qualifying day two, group A... Poche's fishing tomorrow, I think. So he's group B, right? No? I don't know. I don't see him in here. Maybe he already got kicked out. Duck it booted him. <clears throat> All right, so it's group. I think he's in group. Yeah, so group. Qualifying day, group one. Dude, I don't see him in here. Oh, there he is. He's in 10th. He made the cut. So, you know, he's, or no, he's he fishes tomorrow. Day. Yeah, he he's in good tomorrow. position to make the cut. He's in good position to make the cut. You think they he put is. him in that group intentionally? <laughs> I bet. they. I mean, I'm How sure it was you random. <laughs> would, you put mo would you put money on that, Rich? <laughs> I don't would know you? how... How, would you put would money, money on that? Where I get that check cleared, but I wouldn't. I, yes. <laughs> You'd bet the farm on that that was random? I don't know if I'd bet the farm, but I'd put a solid 100 or 500 on it. You think anyone's actually bet a farm? Eh, maybe back in the day. Like what, in the 1800s in a poker game? Probably. I mean, maybe it's just a small farm. You know, it's Could not you imagine having ranch. to go home and explain to your family that you bet the farm and that <laughs> they got to pack their stuff? <laughs> it's just like racing for pink slips, right? Same kind of thing, right? Like, I mean, there's a difference between a car and a farm. Like you're talking livestock, fencing, would you, machinery. Would you bet the bass cat that he was putting group B intentionally? <laughs> I wouldn't bet five bucks. <clears throat> Um, all right, so Redcrest, I'm not sure if he's even in Redcrest. Uh, Cherokee and Douglas. I feel like Lake Murray would set up good for KVD. Stage Kevin three. made Redcrest. He did? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I could see Kevin winning Redcrest, cranking a plug, cranking a f uh, f uh, flat uh, KVD flat 1.5 on Norman. Yeah, I feel like Murray probably sets up for him. He'll good. have a chance at Murray. Gunnersville. He'll have a chance at Gunnersville. I mean, the, it's I Kevin. Three, we can't go Ty through Ty to Ty say Uta, whether. St. Clair and Saginaw. Those there all you go. Well. Tell me Kevin isn't going to make a run to win at least two of those. 33 think, years in. I think he'll have uh, a couple of final day top 10 appearances. I don't think he wins one. Yeah. But that's that's playing the percentages. <clears throat> Clay doesn't think it was random. <laughs> He's Clay. a big MLF supporter, though. When you think about it, he is. He actually loves MLF. Yeah. He hasn't been watching BTL because he's been glued to the uh, MLF live stream. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't want MLF to go out of business. No, First, that would be not bad good. for the sport. Terrible for bass fishing. Terrible for all those anglers. Wow. Terrible for you. Terrible for anybody Everybody. that's involved in the industry. No, they need to be strong and healthy and happy. I think if it was an every fish counts, then I would have probably been uh, willing to give Thrift the trophy. But now that it's a five fish derby, I think it's a little more wide open than Norman. Agreed. Here we go. Dax says, I know someone whose grandfather lost the farm in a poker game. Boy, that's rough. <laughs> I, I mean, like, you'd well, have to get bad beaded on that, right? Like you don't go, you don't go all in with like seven, two off, off, off <laughs> suit 
pre-flop with a farm. Hopefully you had pocket aces or something when you lost the it would, farm. It would have to be pocket <laughs> aces and pocket kings or something. Like if you have to explain to, to your wife that you, like you said, that you went in on like eight deuce pre-flop with the farm. Yeah. Hopefully you, uh, hopefully this was back in the day. <laughs> When, yeah, uh, hopefully this wasn't like last it. week. <laughs> yeah, hopefully this was back when like I forget what the disease was when the Oregon Trail where it would wipe like and you were just scurvy. Like, I don't know what. Uh, this, well, how did uh, did you Bubonic watch the plague? Deal? The Black 18, Plague, eighteen eighty seven opened up and the guy with the white mustache lost his family to. Oh yeah, their, where they kill them all because they, they burn got them the... so they can't like so like. Sure, if you were desperate, like then I guess whatever you got nothing to lose, whatever. But yeah. Um, dysentery <laughs> yeah i think it was dysentery yeah no i thought dysentery was like a that's where you're drinking the water yeah yeah that's right. like yeah. bad water yeah. that was the thing that killed you in oregon trail though right yes yeah you'd be doing so good and then boom. smallpox was it smallpox maybe it could have been it was very contagious apparently though yeah um speaking of poker Percent chance fish and chips is coming back. 50. 50 50. Yeah. Like in the next two years, next five years, 50 50. Uh, dude, it's literally just a matter of. Here's time. what I think could make that even a little spicier than it was before is maybe, you know, you always hear about like people talking about like content creators and tournament mm-hmm. anglers. Mm-hmm. I think you could blend some of that and make it even a more dynamic and and raise the stakes a little bit. I like that. I like that. No, I would love to bring it back. Mark, Mark did a, did such a good job uh, with that tournament for the five years that he had it. That fish and chips. Yeah. No, I mean, he would do it. I talked to Ben all the time. Uh, What's uh, what's the guy in Texas? Uh, uh... Zaldane could get him. No, no, I'm thinking like the, who's the, yeah. uh, Him and Zaldane would fish together. What was He's a Guggen dude. Yeah, that's the guy that name. actually was like an Aggie, right? Oh no, that's Lake Fork. That's Justin Rackley. He's yeah, fish fish and chip. He's fish fish and chips before. Okay, there you he go. Top, Bring him top back five now, right? fish and chips yeah, at Arbor. There you go. Um. Yeah. No, I would like to do it. It's just it's a lot of logistics, a lot of working with the casino, a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And I mean, if we're gonna do it, it's gonna be in the beginning of November or October. And, you know, I'm literally gone pretty much all of July, September and October. So <laughs> it's and I'm the one who would be doing it. You know, I don't know. I'll talk to Mark and see maybe if that is one passion project that he would like to bring right. back and maybe like spearhead this year. Bowling by any chance or and see if we could bring it back in towards the end of October. And you got the invite, Rich. Oh. I have my team partner, low key, is a bit of a poker aficionado. All right. I'll make sure you get the invite when it comes back. If I get the invite, I'll try to do what I can to help you organize it. All right. Take some of that. Well, I'm not saying if you, you like, I'm saying you are invited if we do well, it. No. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if you okay. get it started. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll use some of my Google Sheet stuff to help you, like, run stuff and organize things. I like things it. And try I like it. All right. Do you, th- do you think Milliken will have a top 10 in one of his nine? I think yes. Wouldn't surprise me. Fish is a nine? Guy. I think pretty high percentage. He's a top. He fishes for fish that may make the top 10. Yeah. So if I'm it not comes saying together. Like he's going to consistently. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if he made the elites, first of all. He's a, he's a good angler. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, honestly, the way he fishes, he's going to have some really good events and maybe some not so great events. So I think that he very high percentage chance that uh, he would have a top 10 this year. Century belts. Um, not impossible, not super likely this year. I think uh, Lake St. Clair is the most likely smallmouth event over Lake St. Clair or over uh, St. Lawrence river. And honestly, if they were fishing St. Clair at the time they were fishing St. Lawrence later in the year, I think it would be even a better chance. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, St. Cooper seems a little late. Murray's a little late. Uh, Seminole, I don't know if it's quite prime right now. Okeechobee's probably on a little bit of a not peak curve. 
it's not impossible, but I don't think it's uh, um, all right. Fun game. Hey, all right. What's, what's this? You had that at the. I don't know what that is. Just by the sound, you don't know what that is. Oh, let's do it again. Oh, that's a vixen. <laughs> is it? Oh, yeah, that's 100% a vixen. Yep, that's a vixen. Is that bad that I could tell by the sound of the rattle what it is? That's an OG vixen. Is that a good looking one? Yeah, that's a very good looking one, Rich. Thanks. Did you pick that up off eBay? Well, actually, uh, the community, long circumstance of stories. Somebody watching this who's on somebody else's stream won it. And they, uh, right here. Is this your first OG Vixen? Oh, no. No, no. Oh, okay. No. We talk about Vixens all the time here. I do have one of the Gen 3 ones here. I actually okay. think the Gen 3s are pretty decent. Look what I got. Right. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Brandon, who's streaming on another channel. I you should have another one it. here somewhere. I need to turn. If I turn that light on, you can see it. Look at that. The black one? Yeah. What did they? Those one for 50? Did you uh, buy it or did somebody grab no, it? No, I bought it. They were like 36 yeah. bucks a piece. There are only 1,500 of them. So that one's never coming out of the pack. The limited edition blackout. Yeah. So I bought the white, the bone ones from Tackle Hut. Tackle trap, but uh, no, I probably got like the tackle hut right next to the shaved ice hut. (laughs) Yeah, I probably got like 10 of them. Oh, very nice. So, thank you, Carol. I'm actually, Carol, I'm gonna buy you a walking bait from Omnia and send you one so that because she said she would be too scared to ever throw it, so she sent it to me. So, I was like, I'll buy her a nice, like, sexy dog or a shower blow or something like that to replace it. I mean, it's no number seven, but it's pretty good looking bait. Here's the number seven. I saw a couple on Instagram that got posted by a couple of uh, mutual watchers. So this is number eight. This is this was a Fred number eight can- in the series of the number yeah. seven. This is a hand painted deal. A good bit. And there's the number seven, and then there's where he signed it and labeled it. Ooh. <clears throat> good times. That actually worked pretty good there with the full screen. And then I got, I finally broke down and got a halo light. A little ring light? Yeah. For your TikToking when you're not streaming? Oh, I do so much TikToking. You don't even know. Just on a, it's on a channel I don't know about. I've, just I've proudly, channel. proudly say that I have never been on TikTok in my entire life. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Not probably, but I mean, I just I've never been on it. That's right. You know, with reels know. and YouTube shorts, there's really not much need to get on TikTok. I know. Hallman was like, dude, you're missing the boat. He's like, you need to be on TikTok. I mean, it is probably the one platform you can gain the most reach the quickest. Yeah, I'm not on OnlyFans anymore. No. Yep. Shut that one down. Dex says, I can't believe I paid almost $50 for the Black Vixen. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's a piece of history. <laughs> um, Justin, I did a kind of a comparison. I don't have any of my... Well, I guess I, I don't have any of them open here. The new ones. I'm not going to open that one. I think with the top, top water box is not handy. But uh, I feel like the three definitely is... Cl- like the Gen 3, which is this one that just came out... Mm-hmm is much closer to the original than the Gen 2. Gen 2, to me, I don't know how to describe this. And I don't know. It could be a placebo or not, whatever. It could be in my head. But it seems uh, the Gen 2s were a tad sluggish on the reaction of it. And I think it might have been a little bit of a softer plastic compound. Josh Heron is probably pulling his hair out now going, no, 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 it's the exact same. I don't know. It could have been. It could have just been in my head. But I think it was a much harder, brittler plastic on the Gen 1s. And when you pop it, that thing is, the word that I use is crisp. 
Yeah. It's the line tie more, is definitely slightly different between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. You know what? That might be it where that makes the Gen 1 dig more and go more 90 degrees because the Gen 2 was more of a 45 degree walk. And the Gen 1, if you sit there and just slack line it on braid, I mean, it literally just sachets back and forth in the same spot. And I haven't thrown the Gen 3s. So, yeah, I, I actually don't know that I've ever thrown a Gen 2. I've only have Gen 1 and Gen 3s. Uh, uh there's some you gotta colors look really the gen, yeah you gotta look Go really ahead, close at the line tie and a couple other small minute differences it's not just like it's not like the wiggle where you can just look under the bill and go <laughs> yeah like, right you can't just like oh it's got the old wiggle wart under the bill that's a gen og like it's not that easy obviously if it's in the packaging you can tell but you almost got to look at them side by side with it uh, and you'll see small differences. Um, I do have, like this one. This one does remind me of uh so it's missing the back hook, but I know like Mark. Would oh, that's the, the that's the old three hooks L Rollins boot. Yeah. Mark would silent. Yeah. He loves those. Yeah. Loves them. Yeah. You could pay a lot of money, entry fees and a lot of gas with uh, the only fans. So, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah so back to justin's point i would not I'd, I'd feel very confident in the new based on just look at him side by side shaking them the gen i haven't fished the gen i have thrown the gen 3 not side by side like on the water at the same time but uh i don't think you should justify paying a hundred dollars for a, a gen 1 versus a gen 3 How's no that? and if you want one that's very close to it also the uh tackle kick knocker yeah. is Which exceptionally hard to they're, they're never in stock either they're almost as hard to get as a vixen so are they but yeah i mean like i wouldn't pay more than probably 30 bucks for an og vixen based on the gen threes how's that i think there's a couple colors in gen ones that i'd give a hundred dollar bill for hmm. lemon ice you don't think you could just have tk like paint it for you <laughs> eh, it's just the original man um anybody throw the rico a lot of people throw the ricos i am much more of a uh, fan of the yellow magics myself but they are very similar who has a rico sitting around in february i don't know this is yellow magic though not a rico i don't have any that fans. one's caught a few this, this is a this is a this is a pool four special a little later in the year, Matt. I got you. Red hook on the front there. Yeah. So speaking of pool four, got the St. Jude tournament coming up. Just yeah, that'll few... be fun. First uh first weekend in May. So this will be an interesting. So I'm in you uh hope you fish it or hope you don't fish it. No, I'm fishing it regardless. Oh, so like even if you um, make the day three cut, you're not fishing. Yeah, so I'll be in Virginia. And then I'm leaving my boat and truck at Marty Stone's house. And I'm going to book two flights, one for Friday, or no, one for Thursday night, and then one for Friday night. Or no, one for... it's Because that tournament's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, that one is? Yeah. Okay. So I book one for Thursday night, and then I'll fly out Thursday night from virginia to minneapolis and bart will pick me up and then i'll have one day of practice at the saint jude and the river or he's going to practice and then he'll have to pick me up friday night but one way or the other i'll be in minnesota so you're for either going to get one day of practice or no or day. none and then just fish the river for two days then fly back to virginia and then uh and then go straight to uh wheeler for the next open in alabama there you go yep that's the game plan. Nice. Matt's so powerful. He got the, the open switch to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for the St. Jude. That's how yeah. much influence he has. Yeah. That was it. You you, you got me. Uh, I don't know. Bono says he's got warts in the late nineties. Scared to throw him in there. Wants to lose. I don't know. I've if got... you don't, if you're in an area where you think you're going to friggin' lose them by the rock, crawlers. the uh, rock crawler from Spro. 
and you're good to go. So, I mean, I think getting the, the, the certain colors is maybe a little hard, like the original phantom colors. Get the but I don't 55 think getting, and red bug and but like getting any old wiggle wart. If you just want them repainted, they're they, not that hard. To their find. market crashed. For the just generals. I mean, there was a time when if you just had one, it was 40 bucks. Now it's not like that. I mean, yeah, I've got like 30 of them. I'm not that attached yeah. to them. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not Roger, like certain kinds of the bait, <clears throat> like top waters, like, <laughs> right? This guy. It's regular, whatever, 18, 20 bucks or whatever for this. I mean, I got my money out of that one. Like, I don't lose top waters almost ever. 100%. I have 10 OG Vixens. I don't know that I've ever lost one. There are some of them I haven't even fished yet because I don't need to. Like, I don't know. Like, I've broken one on Rip Rap, and that's it. Bad cast. Like, bad cast. Off rocks. Yep. Just cast it up on the rock and it went and exploded. And I was like, ah. Whereas like mega bass jerk baits, they're replaceable. They're twenty some bucks, but I've and they do probably, break. I probably broke more mega bass than I have lost them. I've broken mega bass on fish. Hmm, haven't done that. I mean, boom! There's one, and you come in, and the fish has busted the bill off the mouth. Hmm. Multiple yeah. times. Fritz sides are really easy to break the whips off. Oh yeah, they split up the middle. But they're only seven bucks so whatever yep oh uh, let's see where are we hour and 40 minutes yep so i'm way past time? my bedtime way past your bed yeah. well the good thing is you don't have to get up two hours early and drive to wherever in oklahoma you have to the studio anymore so no no i just wake up and do day four tomorrow uh how are you giving the beanie away uh we're gonna I'm going to show you how to use the StreamYard giveaway tool so you don't have to do random comments that you pick during streams. I didn't pick stream. them. I literally stream it. All right, show me how to do a random comment. So I sent you the link. So uh, so here's how it works. So uh, basically what we do is uh, we open the StreamYard tool, which I sent you the link to. Okay. And you choose the broadcast you have, which I only have one scheduled right now. Okay. And then I give the people a hashtag. So I can do hashtag, uh, hashtag panger. Like for you the other night, you could have done hashtag XL, hashtag medium, right? You could have done it by the size or whatever you're doing. And I say, start collecting comments. And now people in the chat can just put hashtag panger if they want to enter. And it just is starts collecting a, the entries. What is this witchcraft? It's a stream yard giveaway tool. <laughs> Interesting. So then JJ so then and Brian JJ, and the Caro doctor from and Iowa. Yeah. They're, they're all just, registered. Right. And now it just starts. Oh, there they here they name. all here they all come. Yeah. There's 12 entries. There now there's 19 entries. Tacklecraft is in. People that you didn't chat all night, all of a sudden now they chat. It's probably good for the algorithm that you get all these comments that they just start. Right. I assume that like shows uh we had uh three thousand thirty-six comments during day four with Frank Scalish nice. <laughs> lie on the hundredth. I like it. Okay. Yeah, if you sent me the link for that, that's how I'll definitely I, do it. it. I already did it. Oh, so then ago. if you're a if you're a medium, then everyone puts in whatever that hashtag is. I mean is. you could, right? Like yeah. like you yeah, were yeah, like yeah. you know, like I was saying for instance when you did it with Mercer, like uh like right or or they could only like because you could just pick any randomly whereas like now this you could be like okay you're entering for this drawing for the extra large yep. right i got you makes it seem a little more uh see like uncle marty he didn't comment all night now he's hashtag panger is that really your uncle it is really my uncle huh. look at a nice the little small mouth he's got there the way you said it it sounded like it was an actual family member <laughs> See, Tacras says, uh, just waiting. So, like, we got Facebook people that haven't said anything all night. Now they're entering. We got a prior, like, hook setter. We're going to go to the garage sale. See, now you get to see who's really watching, also. I like it. <clears throat> so, there's 46 people out of the, uh, I don't know how many people are, uh, 123 watching right now on yeah. Facebook or on YouTube. So, oh, uh, maybe I should uh, actually show off what we're. <laughs> 
right? Maybe not everybody. So this is an AFCO. It's an, actually, it looks black on the stream, but it's definitely a dark navy with a little simple patch. It's pretty clean, not gaudy, not, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. All right. 100% pledge, protect and conserve. It's the uh, Summit Beanie Navy, size one. It is very warm. It was only worn by me for an instance over my visor for a picture. It actually is fleece lined. I didn't notice that. Like, yeah. So it's uh, pretty nice. Eric says, is there a Randy Blockett of live streams out there opposed to the random picking technology? <laughs> hey, look, it does work. What's that? You entered? Yeah. Look at that. We'll redraw uh, if, if Panger wins. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. <laughs> the, the, the Tumblr is the uh, the Kraken and DDP, Mr. Schmoltz. Um, you could customize the beanie into a visor, but I find it much more effective when it's cold out to wear a beanie over a visor versus cutting the mm -hmm. top off. That's uh... all right. Now show me how you pick it. Just pay. Oh, so what are we up to here? Let's. Uh, should we check in on it? Yeah. All right. We can. Uh... Fifty. Fifty. That's a nice round number. All right, you know, so, only, only 50. I mean, maybe there's a bunch of people down like Clay. He does no use for a beanie. He lives way down south. Um, so, yeah, now all I do is uh, I hit draw. And then everybody's okay. going to, like, everybody, like, you're going to see, like, all those people. Oh, wow. I like it. Their faces. Oh, and then it slows down. And then everybody's it's like, oh. And Nick. Nick. Wins. I think Nick's a member, which is awesome. It's good to see it. From Minnesota. He's in Minnesota definitely uh oh, look at it literally don't have to pull one out of a hat get it see what he did there yeah because i've been pulling them out of hats before boy it's technology is an amazing thing i should get on the technology train it shouldn't is. i rich so in nixture minnesota so you know this half go hat will get worn and happily paraded around northern minnesota so it's a win fantastic win. good stuff aj's robbed all right Congratulations, Nick. You know the drill, Nick. Send me a, a message on the old Facebook or Instagram or something, and uh, we'll get it shipped out to you. All right. What else? Let's see here. We talked about St. Jude, Visco, Beanie. Maybe we should just finish with a few minutes of how you're going to qualify for the elites this year. I mean, that's the that's the plan every year. Uh I need uh, my plan is to go to to go into every tournament to give myself a chance. Um, and I mean, whether I like it or not, I kind of showed up to the Red River last year. I kind of showed up to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and you, I mean, you can't do that in any of them. And I got back at the the end of the year and put everything that I had into Hartwell and and Rayburn, you know. And, and, and went two for two on that with the top 10. Uh, started the year out in Florida, actually, with a 49th, which was really good. I like the fact that we don't start in Florida and that we end in Florida. I like the schedule. I like the fisheries on the schedule. And uh, this year, I just have to figure out when to take that risk. Um, and I think this past year, I was a little too cavalier with some of the risks that I took. Because I was like, well, I'm going to prove to everybody that I don't just throw a spinning rod 98% of the time. And there were a lot of days that I didn't come in with a limit. But this year, it's it's all about calculated risks. It's not about conservative. It's not about risky. It's not about mega sacks. It's not about making sure I have... It's all about calculated risks. And I think mm -hmm. that's the happy medium that you need to be in the top nine. And I think with you know all nine, and with them taking nine, you can kind of see how the season unfolds right mm -hmm. you probably don't need to take that risk in the first two you can kind of start to see how what's it looking like what's it going to shape up as like what is it um is, the, is there one you've got circled but like i know that's the worst oh thing yeah you you do two you follow in oklahoma so the number one yeah uh bugs island in virginia and st lawrence river that's three You said uh, two, I, then you gave us three. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I have three. That's Illinois public schools for you, folks. And uh, and uh, 
you follow Alabama. I've never been there, but I'm excited to get there. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, how many grass fisheries? We know you're a big grass. Uh, I, I, Toledo Bend, do you want to consider that a grass fishery? Probably, but you don't have to. Like, oh, it's a, no, I got to add, uh, I got to add Lake of the Ozarks in there. Dude, like I'm saying, I like the schedule. It fits me. Yeah, I'm like, excited to get to it, right? Like, not a lot of grass on the schedule. No. There's some, no. uh, a lot of smallmouth. Yep. Decent amount of spots. Yep. So, like, yeah, I feel like I should catch them. There's no excuse. Well, let's see here. Changes. Is there a side bet on you two at the St. Jude? So I've not officially found a partner. I'm still in the search for a partner, but I am still thinking about fishing the 25th annual St. Jude. I've never fished it before, but I, I would like to help contribute because I know they want to hit a million dollars. And I feel like if I can find the right partner, we could uh, raise some money and do some good things. So thinking about it, planning. But sure, if, if I get in, we'll have a side bet. <laughs> Uh, Matt's a hockey guy. Uh, Brian says uh, Flurry needs to retire. I need to quit giving up so many odd man rushes. Yeah, I haven't really been watching them, but uh, my daughter's uh, my twelve year old's a goalie. She's a uh, she's a big Flurry fan. Oh, you know what I got into watching? The women's professional hockey league that is on Hulu. Hmm. It's like Just, sponsored by Discover. They've got like, is it like international or US? No, it's or? like the Buffalo Buttes, and it's international. They've got like Boston, New York, Buffalo, is Minnesota, Minnesota Whitecaps. Is that what in there? I don't know. Or Toledo or not Toledo? Uh, Toronto, Monta- uh, Montreal. Hmm, interesting. Maybe I'll have to see if uh, she wants to watch that. Justin, he has been inquired and he's been very evasive so far. So, <laughs> question Matt, do you consider yourself a YouTube or a pro? I don't know what he's trying to ask there. <clears throat> it's a Ron Burgundy question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you consider yourself a professional angler because you make your money in fishing? I mean, like I, your livelihood? No, I make my living in the fishing industry. So you're not necessarily a professional fisherman, but a fishing professional? <laughs> no, I'm, it's it's a weird deal. Yeah. Um, it absolutely is on a river. Oh, dude. All right. Well, uh, last call for questions, kiddos. We're creeping on two hours. It's getting past Matt's bedtime. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll start winding things down here. Uh, let's see. Um, and if you came in late, I think we had some good time talking about the Bass Heck Master yeah. Elite Fancy Fishing. Not a lot of like, tips and tactics and juice, but more industry talk tonight. Yep. Um, this is one that uh, was asked earlier. Yeah, I need to get I need to get Kent on. I know that he actually has a place on Grand Lake. I saw his boat and truck there the other day when I was up around Grand, so I need to give him a shout. Nice. Um. Oh yeah, sorry, I did miss this one either. Panger, do you have do not have the or... rubber boots yet? Are they even released yet? Do not have the rubber boots. Um. Uh... Roger is glad that you're doing BTL and carrying the torch. Uh, Brandon says he spots two big baits. Those are both uh, bull shads. One of them's the bluegill and one of them's the glide. That's the glide with with the quad hooks on it. Are you going to leave those at home or are you going to bring them with during the opens? Uh, I'll bring them with. And then the other one's just like the four by four with this. 
somebody somebody play at Toledo. Somebody, you can. This also helps you define who's watching a little bit behind in the in the stream. <laughs> yeah. Also, I was thinking the Minnesota Whitecaps. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think one of my daughter's AAA summer coaches plays for the Whitecaps. Crocs with grocery. Uh, I don't have any of the newer awards. Never tried them. Same here. But uh, yeah, so if you guys came in late, the replay's worth it, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, for some reason, if you don't watch BTL during the day, like if you can't skip out of work, you know, Matt's doing a great job having guests on like four times a week, whereas I only stream once a week. So if you have the kind of job where you can tune in at 8.30 a.m. Central, uh, you know, Matt runs a, a great show. And uh, both of them, my show and Matt's, available in your favorite podcast app. Just search BTL, Bass Talk Live, or search Hella Bass. Um, what, what, what's the tow vehicle situation? Nicholas? Uh, still looking for a new one. It's a bad time to get a new one. I mean, it's a. I've got a new truck. I just have drive sixty thousand miles a year on it. So, we'll see if I've come across it. I'm looking at a. Uh, I'm looking at a. Uh, F two fifty now, so used, slightly, you know, just like thirty thousand miles on Eco Boost. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm. I'm or you said diesel. Diesel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I actually like got t boned in like Oof. early August and wiped out my Tahoe. So then I was forced into shopping for a vehicle, and that was an unpleasant experience. But yeah. at least you got something that's serviceable, right? Um, and uh, so I was like. I actually ended up with a really nice uh, 2016 Silverado half ton. I don't put nearly the cross country miles on it. Um, but, yeah. Hopefully I'll be putting less on it now. But you know, not uh, not ideal. Cool, dude. We'll appreciate it. Thanks, um, Rich. Enjoyed it. Good luck in a few weeks. I'll be tuning in on BTL. Work is crazy. It sucks. I can't watch as much BTL live as I used to. So I see you pop in every now and then. Usually it's me like popping in and like saying hi and then yeah. w- listening to the podcast later when I watch the dog or walking the dogs. It's all good. Being on. But, Thanks for having me on. Yeah. All right. Uh, as always, here to help you guys catch more big bass, suck less. <laughs>